Now, soon after that, somebody said, you know what? If we can take pictures of somebody in the, 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 the steps of walking, and then we play it back at 24 frames per second, we get the idea that that person's literally moving in front of us. What if instead I drew someone in the steps of walking? And that's where modern day animation was born. We're gonna take a look at what animation is. We're gonna start with a different forms. Here is a simple drawn animation done by stick figures. for the violence is the only way to keep half of your attention uh, while we're doing it. But, so let's think about it. Pictures had to be drawn in order for that to happen. So if there, this video was one minute long, how many pictures would have to be taken? It would have to be, it would have to be 24 times 60, which is 1,440 pictures had to be drawn in order for that to happen. All right? But it doesn't have to be drawn animation. You can actually take and set something up, take a picture of it, move it, Take another picture of it, move it a little bit more, take another picture, and you can do it with something simple as like your toys like Lego. I know that wasn't the most exciting thing in the planet, but it, it does show you that the Legos themselves do look like they're going to move. What if instead, though, you took it that and ramped it up? Let's innovate that. Let's take what's been done before and let's add something to it. We're going to take this and we're going to add different camera angles. We're going to add different lighting and we're going to move it around and we're going to recreate a movie scene like this one from The Matrix. <laughs> Help! 
probably shoot him. Dodge this. Legos look like they have their own personality and they should move on their own. But what if you took something that didn't have its own personality and didn't look like it should move on its own and you gave it both? Cool, huh? Now, what you didn't realize was you were actually having a history lesson. The food fight is actually the history of wars in the world. Every piece of food represents a different country. The croissants were France, the sausages and pretzels. When you see the pretzels and the sausage march through the croissants, they move out of the way. That was France not fighting Germany as they marched through. And then they, uh, they started to launch the sausages and they fell in the fish and chips. That was the bombing of London. The next thing you saw was the sushi take off and fly into the hamburgers, which was Pearl Harbor. The next war you saw was actually the, the hamburger joining in with the fish and chips, marching back through the croissants and attacking the, the pretzels. And then, of course, you saw the big patty land on all the sushi. That was the bombing of Nagasaki. And then we saw the end of Germany when the B. Stroganoff, which is Russia, came on one side of the pretzel and sausage and the hamburger and the fish and chips came on the other side and that was because Germany could not fight on both sides of their country and that's actually what caused them to lose the war in World War II. The last battle you saw was the Korean War. What happens is you see the beast Stroganoff, Russia, communism, came out and entered into the Korean barbecue and the Korean barbecue came over and attacked other Korean barbecues. All right? Because that was communism entering into the northern Korea. And then northern Korea came and attacked southern, southern Korea. And then the, the hamburger, the United States, came into defense of the, uh, of the South Koreans. And there was a battle ensued. And what you saw was no one won because technically that war is still going on. We were just at a ceasefire. So it's pretty cool, right? You can learn something through animation by giving food, personality, and action without having humans there. But what if you took something that has personality and could move on its own, but you turned it into something else? The guys that made this are called pets. They're really good. In fact, they're so good they did this for a, a shoe company. But they also were up for an Oscar in 2013 for a video they put on YouTube called Guacamole. 
what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at just two of their other ones and then we'll watch guacamole and here you go